I'm David Salvadoff, president of the Internet Society of New York. We're here today uh, at the Circumvention Tools Hackfest at the Columbia Law School. And I'm with Ray Short of the Information, and sorry, one more time, I have to look at this, Information Security Coalition. Okay, can you tell us a little bit about what the Information Security Coalition does? <clears throat> uh, sure, the Information Security Coalition is a two-year project, possibly three if our funding is increased. Uh, it has two parts. The first is to provide uh, information security assistance to human rights activists, uh, civil society organizations, and independent media groups mm -hmm. in countries around the world where uh, online uh, and digital communication is very important to the liberalization of society, um, but may also uh, get those who are communicating uh, into trouble with the law or with uh, uh, crime groups and such like that. So we're talking about people in countries such as uh, Syria, Bahrain, uh, Places in the middle, uh, Central Asian Africa, excuse me, Central Asian republics such as uh, Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, mm -hmm. Turkmenistan, also places like Cuba and Venezuela. In the case of Mexico, also, uh, it's uh, not so much the government that's restricting freedom of information. Or, organized crime groups. It may be organized crime, and so mm -hmm. if we are finding that independent media is reporting on um, a lot of their crime activities, and then to squelch uh, public criticism, these journalists are being targeted. Right. And uh, need I tell you, there are many uh, technical uh, applications that can be utilized to uh, protect your communication, uh, be it through encryption or through um, better patch management so that you don't succumb to some of the, mm -hmm. the easier uh, exploits. And so we have a, a staff of uh, uh, culturally and uh, linguistically appropriate team members out working around the world who uh, work with these kind of organizations to sort of mentor them to improve their uh, security profile, to improve their information security uh, uh, linguistic skills, if you will. Uh, so we provide training, we provide uh, procurement of software and hardware. Mm -hmm. uh, in many cases, we have uh, provided uh, DDoS resistant hardened web hosting. Mm -hmm. uh, in places like uh, Russia, for example, that's a really big favorite uh, tactic on trying to target media. Rather than censoring it, they just try to bring the sites down. Right. Uh -huh. Right. As, now, uh, these hardened servers, are they, in the case of Russia, would they be on Russian soil or a different? Well, each country is different right. because there's laws that right. di are different in each country. For example, in Belarus, uh, the laws are that um, every Belarusian uh, website has to be hosted within its own country. So uh, we are um, restricted, rightfully so, from breaking the law in any of these countries. So we're not out there to circumvent any existing law. And so we would not be able to then do outside hosting. Uh, we have a few stakeholders in Russia who have, uh, we have assisted to provide that uh, DDoS resistant web hosting. Some of them have been outside of the country, some of them have been inside the country. Mm -hmm. So where the law does not restrict that, it's, it's really up to the, the choice of the stakeholder. Mm -hmm. But um, it's also important to state that in providing this kind of assistance to these, these end stakeholders, we're not looking at we're not looking at regime change or overthrowing governments by any means. Uh, we're simply trying to provide uh, better protection to citizens so that they can communicate freely and can communicate their ideas uh, in a pluralistic fashion. Mm -hmm. And uh, the good uh, example I often use is uh, the case of Putin. And many outside Western uh, observers were not very thrilled that, that Putin was once again reelected. Yeah. And there were some election monitors who suggested that maybe as much as 10% 10, 10 of the vote, or maybe even 15% of the vote, was sort of potentially fraudulent. Mm -hmm. Well, that may be fine and well, but he won by a much larger margin. Right. So he would have won anyway. Right. And so um, the argument is simply is that did the population have the opportunity to contribute their ideas to the, the public forum, the election dialogue, mm -hmm. in a free and unmoderated way? Mm -hmm. And... Uh, we're trying to increase that, that right. government in countries. That's actually a process in any society that's an ongoing. It's not a situation where a, a switch is flipped because of an election. You know, there are the ongoing exactly. decisions and policy choices. Uh, and and that's also in the right. case of security, too. Right. Security, you know, is often people say, and this is not my quote by any means, it's not a product, it's a process. Right. So uh, what may make somebody secure in communicating their ideas today may not be the same thing right. it is three years from now. Right. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, do you use some of the tools that are being developed here today? Well, that leads to the second half of our project right. uh, in that we are trying to help people on the ground in, in uh, probably about 20 countries if we, if we reach the end of our two-year uh, uh, project as anticipated. But we also uh, are trying to work with uh, the private sector, mostly, on development of improved and uh, better localized tools mm -hmm. that can help these stakeholders. So um, is there, for example, a tool that um, is available that may need um, improvement and distribution and testing for circumventing censorship, for right. example? Right. Uh, you know, Tor is a perfect example where it's pretty broadly used and there is uh, funding to, to improve it, but there's actually a lot of other tools out there that are being developed that may be specific for specific contexts. And what we've found is that a lot of tech developers don't fully understand uh, all the, the entire context of, of, of what some of these human rights activists and civil society organizations are really working in. Uh, and what, 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 is their a, needs are, what, what their needs are and what is security appropriate, if you will, in Syria may not be what's security appropriate in Turkmenistan. Mm -hmm. And certainly when it comes to circumvention or trying to mitigate surveillance, uh, the needs may be wholly different in mm -hmm. these countries. And so our project is able to not only uh, engage with people, such as the people who are at this Hackfest today, but then as they develop tools, bring them down to the ground and through you know, a circle of trust partnership with these local stakeholders, provide the tools that they may be comfortable to use, test them, mm -hmm. see if they work, and then if there's feedback, bring that feedback back to developers. Into the development process. Yeah, process. so that there's a really a complete feedback yeah. loop because too often that development process is cut off because not many people have access to a human rights activist you know, who is working on behalf of um, Know, more liberalized society from homes in Syria. You just can't get to that person. Right. And so whereas we have this team of people who are on the ground and, and meet these people and know them and they are a trusted entity, mm -hmm. which is critical in these situations, right. uh, we can get those tools to them. Mm -hmm. uh, to address the, the former part, the, the part of working with the uh, developers who work on tools, we also have a granting mechanism. So we are issuing grants to um, sub-partners, if you will, to help them improve their products, uh, to help them translate it into other languages. Too many of these tools are only in English. Mm -hmm. And um, often, uh, particularly in some of the more illiberal societies, fluency in English is, is too low for those to be used safely. Uh -huh. um, and also to improve um, in documentation and in localization so that there may be, there may be a system out there or a tool, it might even be a tour, uh, which is appropriate in most contexts but not fully appropriate in this one. Mm -hmm. or the protocol that is used for its for our product's use is being blocked in this country, but not in the other. Mm -hmm. How can we modify that product to make it work? Right. Uh -huh. right. So there's two sides to right. it. And I think that makes our product, our project, excuse me, unique because there's a lot of projects out there that go and provide information security training to you know human rights activists and what have you. But we're looking at building longer term relationships mm -hmm. so that we can. Um, uh, provide them more than just training. We can provide them the other elements necessary to to increase their cybersecurity uh, risk. Uh, um, um, excuse me, our cybersecurity uh, risk assessment and, and uh, defenses. But also that um, through input they can provide to us, and we can pass back to the developers. The developers can improve their projects. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's right. twofold. Right. You do. You're, you're doing testing on these software tools yourself before you provide them to. Uh, well, we actually, well, myself, I would say I don't, we fund that. So we, would, we, have, we have begun to fund and pay for um, testers to do testing. Oh. We also have um, begun developing a, um, essentially a peer review board so that mm -hmm. there are better, more centralized resources for a peer review of this open source software. Mm -hmm. We find that too often, um, you know, there's, there's programmers out there who are, wanting to do good, right. may have day jobs, and the, uh, over the weekend or at night they're doing coding on things that they think right. are val valuable to um, these kind of stakeholders in these challenging countries. And the second they finish it, they're so excited about that, they just send it out. Mm -hmm. Problem is, the guy on the other end in Syria, if he doesn't know this guy who's just sent this piece of software uh, from Squat, he's not going to use it. And uh, that's where peer review is so essential. Mm -hmm. And so we're trying to uh, increase that and to uh, develop a system that allows that to, to foster naturally. That's great. OK, is there anything else you'd like to add here? Or? Um, well, gosh, I suppose if there are stakeholders and organizations that are on the ground, 
uh, either with whom uh, your organizations work right. or others okay. who might see this. I mean, they can um, reach out to us. Mm -hmm. The uh, website is informsec, so a few abbreviations there, I-N-F-O-R-M-S-E-C dot net. Mm -hmm. And it's anonymous, and it allows us to then um, reach out to them through encrypted email and determine uh, who they are and ways that we can help them. But uh -huh. it's completely free, um, available service to uh, those who are in need. That's fantastic. Thanks very much. Thank you. Okay. Okay.